right, welcome to part three of our data grid tutorial. And we are going to start this tutorial by fixing a uh, mistake I have made in the last tutorial. And that is, these values are not correct. The check marks, the check marks should have been on the uh, um, songs that have a soundtrack movie versus the other way around. So right now we have in incorrect positions. So that's an easy fix. Let's go to our code behind file, to our um, window XAML.cs file, and let's change this values from true to false and false to true. And that should take care of our problem. We'll run this again. All right, now we have the check marks in correct places. Okay. All right, so um, the scroll bar, I mean, uh, with most controls like list box, list views, data grid, uh, it's smart enough when the data exceeds the bounds of the control, the scroll bar automatically appears. I mean, if you want it, you can make it invisible. I mean, but that's probably not going to be a common practice. So, but the option is there. If you want to, you can disable it. Uh, that brings us to actually a uh, interesting property. And this property, if you guys ever dealt with Excel, you will probably, it will look familiar to you. But this property is called frozen um, frozen column count. Okay, so I'm gonna just say three and run this. I'm gonna set the frozen column count to three and run this and see what happens. All right, so let's try to scroll this. So if you notice, these three columns are frozen. They don't move. The rest, they move in and out, or slides in and out, but uh, these first three columns are fixed. So in other words, they're frozen. Okay, so that's what the frozen column count does. Okay, just want to touch on that real quick. And then we are going to add another property. It's going to be a different type of property. It's going to be a URI. Let's call this URL. Okay. So um, I'm going to go up here back in our loop and set the value for our new property. So for this, I want to add um, the, let's say, website. So, I mean, I don't have the actual website's address, but we're going to try to make something up. Okay, so uh, I want this to be assigned to so a string, we a string. Well, actually, no. I mean, we have to create a new instance of a URI. All right, and then we'll pass in. We're going to use the overloaded version. Uh, this guy here, the third overload version. So we need a string value. I'm going to use string interpolation to create a string value. So I'm going to say www. And then I'm going to add the artist name to it. So I'm going to open close curly braces. And this artist comes from line three. So I'm just going to copy this here and paste right here. So www.artist.com. 
Okay, and then the second parameter will be URI kind dot relative. Okay, and that's it. So let's run this. And if we scroll to the right to see our last property, as you can see again, once again, the data grid is smart enough to realize this is a hyperlink, it's a URI kind, and it formats the string in blue color and underlines it just to um, indicate that's a URL. Okay. I think you can do the same thing with the email addresses, things like that too. But that's data grid and um, displaying in correct formats with check marks, with uh, combo boxes, with hyperlinks, and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, Let's see what else I want to cover today. Oh, yeah. So um, the header, there are not many properties actually, almost none that addresses the, uh, you know, the background header or font. Uh, I mean, there's not many things we can change in the properties to change the look and feel of the header section. If you go to properties, you probably, let's go to see if we can find anything here. Columns, no, headers. So you got um, column header. There's not really much here we can use visibility style. So basically, all we left is creating a style. I mean, there's always a way to do it. So, so we are going to use styles for changing the uh, header, uh, the way it looks. So let's add a Windows resources tab. Let's create a style. And here we want to target the. Uh, Create column header right here. Okay, so that's going to change the way the column header looks. So let's first of all let's add a new setter and the property I'm looking for font size. Let's go with font size first. And I want to set this to 16. All right. Um, let's make it bold. Let's go with Debbie Bold. All right. Now we can change the background. with black and since we changed black we can't see we can't read anything so let's change the uh, foreground as well and let's change this to white okay let's run this again Pretty good. Okay, and uh, that's not the only thing we can really change here. Uh, we can change the cells, we can target the cells. So let's say, uh, let's create another style and let's target the cells.
Uh, before we do that, actually, I want to get rid of the uh, grid lines. I want to change this to none. And here, I want to set the uh, setter property. Let's say uh, brush, border brush to Gainsborough. And let's change the thickness as well. Let's go with three. And now we got completely different look, which is quite pleasant. Let's run this. And we got ourselves a beautiful grid, data grid, with frozen columns and all that good stuff. Okay, so um, I think that's all I like to cover for the regular data grid, grid I mean default. Um, but if you have any questions or uh, add anything, I can definitely, uh, you know, um, go for it. But um, the next one, I think, we'll start doing a custom data grid, ground up. Um, so until then, I'll see you. Take it easy.